Hey guys, this is Theojo Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a clean install when you do your free upgrade from either Windows 7 or Windows 8 to Windows 10. Now, this is not going to be a true clean install because I tried that and Windows 10 refused to activate, even though Microsoft assured me if you just wait, you know, the hardware would identify itself and activate, but it never happened, even after 24 hours. So. I figured this is going to be the next best thing. I'm going to show you how to do pretty much a clean install. It's going to get you more or less the same effect. You know, there might be a little bit different, but you probably won't even notice. If you really want to do a true clean install, then you're probably someone who knows how to do that anyway. So I'm going to show you how to do the next best thing. It's a lot easier, so if you're not that familiar with computers, then you should have no problem. It's really no more difficult than just doing the upgrade in the first place. So, why do I show you what to do? Now, first of all, obviously I have to record off the screen because when we go to do the update, it's going to take us out of Windows, so I can't really use a screen recorder. So, that's why I'm just recording right off the screen. But basically, the first thing we want to do is actually install Windows 10. Now, if you reserved your free upgrade and you didn't actually get the notification to download it, you can download it right now off Microsoft's website. They have a tool create the installation media. So this will work if you didn't necessarily get the installation notification yet. Basically, I'll put the link to this in the description. And what you do is you pick whichever version you're using, 32 or 64 bit. I'm using 64 bit. So once it's done downloading, I will show you guys what to do. Alright, so the download just finished and we're going to run. So it asks you what you want to do, and in this case, you could actually do upgrade this PC now. If you plan on doing a true clean install later, if you know what you're doing, you can create additional media, but you probably just hit upgrade this PC now. What I did was actually burned it to a disk, so if you do it in that case, what you do is you just click next, make sure you pick the right language, because it does not default to English. And then what you want to pick for edition is the same Windows edition you're coming from. So if you're on Windows 7 Pro, you want to do Windows 10 Pro. If you're on Windows 7 Home or Windows 8 Home, you want to do Windows 10 Home. The N is, I'm not 100% sure exactly what those are. I think those might be for Europe because of legal disputes. They have to include certain software or not. And then also next, you can either pick 64 bit or 32 bit, and then you just click next, and it would it's going to generate a ISO file, or you can burn it to your USB drive, and then that that'll just create the installation media. I already did it, so I'm not going to go through that process and make you wait. But this is the disk that's on here. But I'll show you what you do when you just hit upgrade this PC down. You basically just hit next. It pretty much just downloads the installation media and then it's going to run it once it's done. I actually have it on this disk as I just mentioned, so I'm not going to wait for this to download. It's the same process, so let's see how it works. So once the installation media is all downloaded or you burn it to a disk, you run it and then it just prepares to install it. Once it's done preparing, we're going to download and install updates, of course. Alright, so we just got done with the updates and we're doing more waiting. Now we're going to do what is closest to the install you can get without actually doing one, and that's change what the key is. And right now, before you click anything, you need to make sure that you have everything that you want to keep backed up, because the way we're going to do it is going to wipe everything. So you need to do a backup. Some drive, another hard drive, or anything before you do this, because doing a clean install, that's exactly what it is, it's going to wipe everything off. You just do a regular upgrade, where it says keep personal files and apps, or keep personal files only, and your personal files should stay put, but there's still a risk always that something's going to go wrong. Basically, keep files only is going to the app, but if you have settings in those apps that you need, well, they're going to be deleted too. So, just make sure you have everything backed up. We're going to go through nothing. And this is going to say everything will be deleted, including files, apps, and settings. So once you hit that, you hit next. And it's going to check for updates one more time. And then it's just going to confirm that this time we're not keeping anything. And it's installing this intro. At this point, we can click install. And then it's going to start installing. It's going to re 
restart the computer a few times. So you pretty much just want to let it go. Last time it took maybe 30 minutes. So it doesn't take, you know, a ridiculous amount of time, but then again, I don't really have that big of a hard drive on here as the OS drive, so your mileage may vary. If you're doing an in-place upgrade and you have a lot of apps and stuff, it'll probably take a lot longer. Looks like it was having a bit of trouble focusing, but I'll come back once it's done and we'll see what happens. So after that first screen, it's going to restart and then you'll just see this and we'll wait again. Alright, so after a couple of restarts, we get to the configuration page. So you just want to pick all your, you know, typical stuff. It's going to ask you if you want to do express settings. I'm not going to do that. I want to customize what it enables. So personalized speech by sending contacts and calendar details. I don't want to do that. I don't really, you can pick these yourself. Send typing and, yeah, no, definitely not sending my data. Let apps use your advertising ID, don't think so. Location, all right, that's fine. So it's in nowhere I am. That can be useful. Browse protection, you have to use protection. All right. Automatically connect the hotspots. You can have these enabled if you want, but connecting the open hotspots is probably not the best idea if you don't have to Gonna set things up and then we'll be at the desktop in no time. Alright, so here we are, and this is pretty much a clean install. You don't see any garbage all over the desktop. There's no apps that were installed by default, none of that. And sure, it's not a true clean install. I'll show you how to do that next if you really want to do it. But for now, this is gonna be fine for most people if you want to start fresh without any startup programs or old crap that's lying around, anything like that. And from what I read, the actual old files are going to be stored in Windows Old. So if you forgot to, you know, save something, it's all going to be in this Windows Old file. But I don't need any of that, so I'm just going to delete that. So if you, if you back everything up, you don't need anything we're going to delete anyway. Just Windows Old, delete that. And as you can see, this did not affect my second drive. So I had a second data drive where I have this footage. I didn't have any programs or anything installed on that. So that drive is still intact. It only affected the operating system folders and the folders that were on. So now let's make sure that it actually activated. So we're going to type in activate to see if Windows is activated. And you have to be connected to the internet. And it says Windows is activated. Now the reason that I didn't do a true clean install is because last time I did this and I did the upgrade just like I did now and it said Windows is activated and then you have to do this no matter what. You have to do a regular in-place upgrade so that Windows will register your hardware and send it to the activation server. So if you do do a clean install, supposedly it stores that data and can activate it. But that didn't happen apparently, so it didn't activate. So now I just did this type of clean install which you know, for this purpose it's good enough because I didn't really have anything on there anyway. So now if you want to do a clean install, a true clean install, this is how you go about doing it. Make sure you burn that original ISO file that we created back in the beginning of the video where it said create installation media. I have it already in the drive and it's a bootable drive so then we're going to restart the computer. I'm not actually going to do it but I'll show you the process start and your computer will probably ask you to boot from CD or DVD depending on your boot options. If it doesn't then you probably have to go into your BIOS and change your boot settings and that's going to be different depending on the computer so you just have to look that up. But we're booting onto the install disk now. Alright so when you're doing clean install and you insert the boot disk, this is what you get. This is the installation setup and again this is optional. If you're happy with what you already have, then you don't have to do a clean install. If you really want the clean install, this is how you do it. And theoretically, you should have no problem. Microsoft claims that since it was activated before, you should be able to do a clean install. 
but I had issues, other people had issues. So if you want to do this, you know, you can risk it yourself. The worst you'd have to do is just, well, go back to the original Windows 7, Windows 8, cover that, and then redo the update. That's what exactly I did for the fix. So now, set up. Now at this point, you don't have a Windows 10 key because we're doing upgrades from Windows 7 or Windows 8, so you just skip it or click do this later and you kind of have a key for a key. And then this is the page in every time you install Windows, you're going to get the option to do either upgrade, which we already did, or the custom install, which is a true clean install. So I'll show you how that looks. Now, this is probably the toughest part, and this is really the only thing extra you need to know to be able to do a clean install, and that would be picking which partition you want to install to. So you want to make sure it's the right one. I'm going to actually put in a little segment. I'm going to record a little instructional video to help you figure out which drive is which, so you make sure that you are going to be picking the correct drive. Okay, so I wanted to insert this part of the video to help people make sure that they're installing on the right partition. So what you want to do is you want to go to your computer management panel. You can either search for this or right click on my computer in the start menu. It's on all versions of Windows. Once you get to this, you go to disk management and then you're going to get a view of all the hard drives on your computer once they load up and all the partitions as well. So here we are and as you can see I have several different partitions and lots of different drives. Now you might be trying to figure out all right, which is the disk I want to install on. Now I know that my C drive is where my operating system all that stuff is and then you can look here and find that all right, well, the C drive is on disk 0. So that means that the 953 gigabyte partition on the disk 0 is the one you want to format when you go to install Windows 10. And these other ones, if I had the same partition size and everything, it might be hard to tell. So then you can go and see, all right, disk E, disk D, you'd look at which letter it is and look at the disk number, and that's how you'd be able to figure it out if it's not really labeled specifically in the installation of Windows 10. So you can just look at this panel, and it should be pretty obvious which is going to be the partition on which drive that you want to format, and that's all you do with that. All right, so at this point, presumably, you had gone to the disk management in Windows and looked at the different drives and figured out which is the one your operating system is installed to. Obviously, mine's labeled OS install because it's a pretty small SSD. So if I were to do a clean install, you would form, you click Format, which would wipe that entire partition. So I'm not going to do that right now, but that's what you would do. And then once it's formatted, then you click Next on it, and then you would proceed with the installation, and it would be pretty much the same as the one we just went through. And then it would be a true clean install because obviously we completely wiped the partition and we'd be installing completely fresh. But like I said, what we did before 